Sudhir Singh, the CEO and ED at Co4 joins in on the show right now. Sudhir, hi, good morning. Firstly, uh, festival greetings to you and your team and I'm guessing it's a happy Diwali considering it was a good offline performance. It's, it's, it's a very happy Diwali as always as, uh, and the last five Diwalis have been very happy for us. We extend uh, festival greetings to you and to your team as well. It has been a happy Diwali for the past few uh, quarters or five quarters to be precise. Uh, you know, that's exactly the point because you've managed to retain your guidance implying a 2.5% um, CAGR for uh, Q3 and Q4. Are you being conservative or seasonality might slow growth in second half, you think? If you look at our record over the last five plus years, we've always uh, met or exceeded guidance. And the approach always has been to be conservative, to make sure that we meet and then do our very best to try to exceed it by the widest possible margin. That's going to be the intent this year as well. Our guidance is not 20% CC organic. It is at least 20% CC organic. So the intent, of course, is to meet it, which I think we should easily, and then exceed it by some. Okay. Under promise, over devil deliver, I guess. That's the mantra you go by. But tell me, you faced higher cross-currency mm -hmm. pact also because of higher Europe exposure, which is almost about 40%, as I understand. What's your reading of the slowdown in Europe and the kind of impact that it's going to have on your business? So, uh, you're right on both counts. Uh, our uh, margin appreciation, which is almost 200 bips over the last quarter, only saw 10 bips coming because of currency tailwinds. The rest of it was because of structural levers. When we look at Europe right now, when we look at the growth that we are seeing and the fact that our concentration in Europe is largely centered around banking and travel alone, we continue to see resilience. We continue to see robust, sustained growth going forward as well. Exactly my question, so do you talk about, uh, you know, demand momentum continuing in BFSI and travel and durable uh, momentum there, but given the headlines that we are seeing, whether in terms of Credit Suisse and other banking names plus travel companies, could you explain for our viewers how you are expecting demand to be resilient from here on? Absolutely. If you look at our presence and if, as we look at our presence in Europe, our relationships are limited but deep, so we're not spread very widely across a wide swath of clients. It is uh, a limited number of tenured, deep relationships. When we look at the demand outlook, when we look at demand resilience, when we look at large deal pipeline that we have across the world, including Europe, within these select clients, which is where the bulk of our revenue comes from, we continue to see increased enhanced engagement and a demand, demand pipeline, not just a demand pipeline, a share of wallet across these select deep relationships that appears to be poised to expand. There is an interesting metric that we always call out, have always called out for more than five years now, which is our 12 month locked in order executable. This quarter, that number crossed $800 million for the first time in our history, and it slept quite some from $745 million last quarter to about 800 plus, 802 odd for the current quarter. So when we look at all of this, the grounds up view from the select but deep client relationships, when we look at what is already locked for the next 12 months, this is not just fiscal year 23, this is all the way till the end of the first half of next year, FI24, we feel good about where we are, not just in Europe, but across. Okay, and you've also maintained your margin guidance at 185 to 19%. Though a lot of analysts believe that in terms of utilization, attrition, a lot of uh, the upside is already factored in. What are the other levers that you see for margin expansion from here on? Well, if you look at us, those upsides are not factored in. Uh, I mean, the analysts would be coming in from an industry perspective. Our utilization is still only about 77.5% and that utilization number includes trainees. The other piece that makes us somewhat atypical is, if you look at the profile of CoForge over just the last eight quarters, the percent offshore revenues as a percentage of global revenues has leapt, and I use the word very purposely, leapt from 36% to 50%. That's a huge 
that's a literally a huge structural change in the operating profile of the firm and I mean switching a number from 36 to 50 percent augurs well not just for the short term it is getting reflected in our margin performance but also for the long term as I said at the outset our margin sequentially grew by almost 200 bips only 10 bips came from the currency tailwind the rest of it has been driven by utilization increase by 120 bips by offshoring increase by another 190 200 bips and by the fact that the campus program that we kicked off with vigor two years back is really delivering for us now finally mr singh any timeline for bearing offloading their stake and what are the plans for the adr listing i think that's a question best answered by bearing uh, as far as the adr listing is concerned we remain very committed to the adr listing process the markets however are not supportive of that listing as you can imagine right now so we continue to monitor the markets and we will take a call as a firm working of course under the direction of the board as and when the market situation improves all right thank you so much for joining in and sharing with us your outlook and here's wishing you and your team a very happy diwali